has grown into fighting to save the community. Because through our efforts in trying to save the church, we discovered so many other things that they were doing to steal the community from us. What has happened is that the Venice community for so many years, from the time that the Reese's and the Tabers came as pioneers to start this community right here where we're standing, our community felt that we were forgotten, but we took care of ourselves. We felt that no one else cared about us, but we cared about ourselves. We felt that no one else was concerned about our growth and development, so we took things in our own hands and had our own grocery stores, and we had our own community. But while we were doing that, they were strategically deciding that this one, one community that was intentionally a community of color was being strategically designed to take, be taken away from us. And without us understanding what was going on, we began to see the changes in the community. So we had people um, that, whose shoulders that we stand on today. Mrs. Edwards, who was the librarian when the library was over, uh, on uh, California. We have Vera Davis and we have uh, uh, Opal Jones and other people who back in the 60s were the advocates and the, uh, the, um, the activists to save this community. It was in 1970 that those 15 um, low income apartment buildings were built and there has not been a low income 100% affordable housing built since 1970. So what do you think about that? While our community has not had any development and, and increase in low income, we've had our houses taken away from us and we have big box concrete, concrete glass structures built in their place. So that has driven people out of our community. And so when you look around, people that you once knew were here are no longer here. And as you look at buildings that are going up that are not about affordable for people like you and me, it's about people that want to live in a billionaire um, residence that doesn't uh, represent the community at all. Since our, our struggle and our fight has begun, we've been winners. We've won appeal after appeal. And that's something to celebrate. And I want everybody to celebrate that. Because what I'm telling you is that people, when we don't have a lawyer, when we have had no legal assistance up until maybe a few weeks ago when we had someone bless us with some advisory legal assistance, we have taken this fight all the way to the Superior Court. And I want to hear you say something about being happy about that. <laughs> being happy about that because some, some of us sit on these church steps every Sunday to keep the word alive and to remind them that we have not given up, that we're not gonna give up until we win. But we know from the struggles that we've had ever since the 1900s when the Reese's and Tabers came, we've been struggling ever since then. The struggle is not gonna stop. Once we reach where the goal that we're trying to achieve, we're gonna have to keep on because the fight is never ending. This community is a rich community. It's richer to others in ways that are different than its richness to us. Our diversity makes us unique, but our unity is our power. I wanna hear you say that. Our diversity is our strength. I wanna hear it loud. Our diversity is our strength. But our unity is our power. Our unity is our power. Our unity is our power. The people of color in this community, the African Americans that started this community, the indigenous people that were already here in this community, we will not, we will not have our community taken away from us. You cannot with your money and all your billionaires and all of your developers and all of your real estate mongols come in here and take what belongs to us. Are you going to allow that to happen? No. Are you going to allow that to happen? No. Then I want some of you to come out here on Sunday, if, even if you only have time to spend 10 minutes, but come out here and show them and us that we're supported, that we're not in this fight alone. Yeah. That some of you that are standing around here today, enjoying today, come out here and just show up show up and show out and let it be known that 
we're winners. We're not giving up until they go away. What time every Sunday starting at 12 o'clock? Every Sunday, at least until 3 o'clock, show up, be here, let it be known, write letters to the city planning because they're part of the conspiracy. I hate to say that, but it's true. Do you think developers and real estate people can come in and do what they're doing in this community without the assistance of people in our governmental agencies like our city planning department? Um, the appeals that we've been winning so far with the city planning department and the permits that they were given for this building to be, what's the word, adaptively reused <laughs> for a residence. So can you imagine this church being somebody's residence? Can you imagine this church being someone's residence? And the person, the person that sold this church to the buyers, the billionaire buyers, took the money that belonged to this community, for this church, and went to another place in Westchester and bought another building and made it a church. And he named that church First Baptist Worship Center of Venice. <laughs> wow. And now that church that was built with the money that he received from this church is also in foreclosure. Now, the bad thing about that is that the money that was received for selling this church belongs to the community, belongs to the members and the congregation of this church, belongs to the people that had the blood, sweat, and tears to build this church once they left the church that was across the street here, where they outgrew, the congregation outgrew, and then the congregation spent their money, their time, their blood, their sweat, their tears, and marched across the street, this very street right here, into the doors of that church. Not those doors, because those doors that were there then have been taken away, but through the doorway of this church and continued their spiritual worshiping and continued their assistance to the community and continued their work. And EL Home Square, where we are all sitting right now, is a representative representation of all of that work. It cannot be erased just because someone comes in and decides that they want to purchase a church to make it their residence. We have got to stand up. I can't say it loud enough. We have got to stand up. So I want to see you stand up. I want to see you stand up for what you believe in. If you believe in the work that we're doing, if you believe in a Laddie Williams, and if you believe in a Miguel Bravo, and if you believe in a Shaitan Valentine, and if you believe in Ed, and if you believe in all of the people that come out here, uh, Ingrid, a uh, Margaret, that are doing the work that helps us stand here today after winning appeal after appeal after appeal. You got to come and help us. We can't keep doing it all by ourselves. You have to show up at the hearings when they have the hearings because even if you don't say anything, your presence is important. Your, spread, your presence speaks loudly. When they see a crowd like this showing up in those hearing rooms, it speaks in support of the issues that we're there to fight against there to fight for the appeals that we are asking the courts to support us on. There's so much more to the story. Usually the beachhead has something um, in their paper every week that tells more of the story, but what I'm asking you all to do today and to participate along with us is to show up, be supportive, speak out, let your voices be heard, let your presence be known, it's a hard fight, it's a movement, but you know, movements about are all about the spirituality and the culture of what it is you're trying to preserve. And here we're not just trying to preserve the church, although that's important. We're trying to preserve a community that is eroding right in front of our eyes every single day. Every time you see a house that's torn down and that's replaced by a building that is for a single family residence, 
every time you drive down the street and the street doesn't look familiar to you anymore because the houses that once were there are no longer there. Every time you pass this park over here that we just got through fighting and still fighting to keep it from becoming a dog park. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Yes. To keep it from becoming a dog park. Whoa. Oakwood Playground where I used to go every summer when I was a kid. And James, you used to go there every summer when you were a kid. And dances on Wednesday night when we had, I don't know about you, but I had to sneak out because it was a school night. We weren't supposed to be going anywhere on a school night, but dances at Oakwood. And now we have to fight to preserve it as a community park for people, for kids, for families, because the gentrifiers want to make it a park for dogs when they don't want to walk six blocks down to Westminster and, and Main Street where there is a dog park. I'm telling you all here that the fight continues on so many different things. Did you know that they want to build a hotel on Abbott Kinney? A hotel on Abbott Kinney? Do you know that the church that some of us know as Mr. and Mrs. Edwards, Reverend, uh, Reverend um, Shepherd's Church on 6th and San Juan, now it's going to be a residence. It used to be a church. It, before that, it used to be a, a women's club for African American women. It's not going to be that anymore if we don't raise our voices. There are just so, 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 so many things. So if you want to know more, always get a copy of the Beachhead. Always come out here on Sunday at 12 noon to 3 o'clock where we're talking about the happenings that are going on and ways in which you can continue to support us and be informed about what's going on in the community. And I thank you all so very much. Yeah.